class is Miss Devon here and in today's lesson we're going to be learning about basic addition. Remember guys in our previous lessons we learned counting with numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. If you don't understand feel free to revisit yesterday's lesson in the Moodle. If so stay tuned and we'll carry on. Just as this picture describes when adding we are combining, increasing, putting together, grouping, whatever you want to call it, two add-ins in order to find the sum, which is the final answer to the equation. When adding, there are many different strategies and techniques you can use to make it a lot easier for you, and we're going to talk about some. One strategy that you can use, which is the first we're going to talk about, is that you can count on your fingers. So, such as in the first block, the equation is 5 plus 2 equals 7. And as you can see, the little cartoon fingers on one hand has held up a 5 and another has held up a 2. So then you can count the fingers in the picture and in the end you should get 7, which makes it a lot simpler because you can visually see it if you are a visual learner because I know I am. The second strategy we're going to talk about is the one that's right to the right of the first box and that's how we're going to look at them all the way down is from left to right. So in this picture it's saying that you lock in the larger number in your head which would be the 5 in this equation and then use your fingers to count the smaller number onto it. So when you think in your head 5 you can count two fingers and go from there so it would be 5, 6, 7 which makes it a lot simpler if you start with the larger one because you get the larger number, which is the harder one out the way, and then just add on from there. In the next strategy we will be looking at, you can also use a 10 frame. And in a 10 frame, you can look at the picture and see that you can just draw a rectangle and divide it down the middle and then draw lines, making sure there are 10 boxes inside of that rectangle. And when doing this and using it to add, you take the first add end and you fill in each box with a marker or a plot point or whatever you want to call it in order to keep your spot. And then you do the same for the second add end. So this is another visual way that you can blatantly see that your sum is right in front of you with no problem at all and you can count it even if you do have a mistake. In order to solve an addition equation you can also use tally marks which are just little lines that you draw and they come in groups of five so they're very easy to count. So when doing five plus two equals seven your tally marks you would draw five lines in one group and that would be a group of tallies and then you would start another group and there would only be two in that group but that's perfectly okay because you know there are five in the first one because that group is full so when you're counting you can just say that that's a group of five and then you can count the two extra tallies and that's another visual way for those who aren't as artsy or like to draw as much or even mental thinkers it's just a way to actually view what you're doing but in an easier way. As you become more advanced in math, you can eventually start doing mental math when you get more comfortable in what you're doing. So that's just becoming accustomed to it and being able to think in your head, you know, two plus two is four or five plus two is seven like we're learning today. So you won't have to draw anything out and there will be no visual part of it. And some people can just naturally do this, but if you can't, Resort back to your pictures because there's nothing wrong with it as long as you get the right answer. Like we've already talked about, you can draw a picture, but some people need more of a visual representation and that's fine. So you can look at this worksheet picture that I have for you and in the box it says 5 plus 2 is 7 and there are 5 jellyfish drawn and 2 goldfish. So maybe the equation was, if you have five jellyfish and two goldfish, what do you have then? And this person needed to draw this out to visually see that. And that works for people. And if it works for you, that's fine. You can do that. But just don't spend all of your time and focus on drawing 
whereas getting the answer should be the most important aspect of it. Number lines can also be helpful. I know that I still use them to this day and I am 18 years old, but a number line, you draw it out as a line and you plot your points with your counting numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on up to whatever number you need. So in the picture, we need up to 7. So we're going to just do a number line of 10. And what you do is you count to the number 5 on the line. And what you do is you add 2 more. So you just move down 2 more spaces since your other add end is 2. And you should get to 7. And that's also a visual representation where you can actually see the numbers changing right before your eyes. And last but not least, you can write a number sentence, which is just a good old traditional way of learning. And that's how many equations are written out anyways. So in a number sentence, you just write 5 plus 2 equals. And you figure it out from there. And the answer would be 7, just like the picture shows. So when doing a number sentence, all you really have to do is write out your add-ins and combine them from there, and you get your sum. I've told you about many of the strategies I like to use when adding, and you guys are brilliant, so I know you've caught on very fast. So let's put some of those strategies to the test and see how well they actually do work when you're adding equations. All right, guys, I've told you what I could, but now it's time for us to practice with actual examples. So first, we're going to start with a number sentence where it's the add in plus the add in equals the sum. First, we know we are adding because of the plus sign that we see between 1 and 2. It looks like a small cross. The 1 and 2 are called add-ins, and those are the numbers that we add together to get 3, which is called the sum. This entire sequence is called an equation. 3 is the final answer, which sits behind the equal sign, which is the symbol right in front of it that looks like two bars. Now let's try to add one together. In this equation, we will be using the strategy of drawing a picture in order to help us find the answer. So here we go. Let's add four plus three. This picture says that four plus three equals seven, but we're going to walk through it so it makes more sense. Since our first add end is four, you can see that the picture above has four dots. So I want you to count one, two, three, four, and then there's a plus sign saying that we're going to add three to the four that we just counted. And then there's three dots above it. So we're gonna say one, two, three. And then the equal sign, which means that this is going to be our final answer. And the picture says seven. So we're gonna count the dots to make sure there are seven dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The picture makes it a lot easier to understand because we can visually see that 4 plus 3 equals 7. As you become more advanced and the numbers we're working with in addition become larger, it will become more difficult. However, while we're just learning the basic addition like we are right now, it's perfectly okay to draw out your dots. Like in this picture that we're looking at, we did right here, where there are four dots for the first add-in, which is 4, and then the plus sign, which means we're adding them together. And then the second add-in is three, so we drew three dots above the three. And then when we count all of the red dots together, they equal seven. So when you come up with your sum, it's a proven fact that four plus three equals seven, and it is definitely not a wrong answer. Here I have added just a worksheet with some simple addition equations for you to take a try at. Um, they're not very hard, just pause the video and when you're finished with your worksheet, we will go over the answers together. All right, let's go over the first row of problems together and we will start with six plus four. So you can lock in the 
number six in your head since it's the larger number and count on. So you can say six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten will be your answer. Next is four plus two. Four is the larger number, so lock four into your head and count on. Five, six. Six would be your answer for that one. Four plus four is a little bit different. You can lock either into your head because it is the same number. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Next is three plus one. Three is the larger number, so lock that in. And then it's, you just count one above it. So that would be four. Five plus three, you could start at five and count on three more. Five, six, seven, eight. Your answer would be eight. And last, three plus three is a lot like four plus four. You can lock either one into your brain. Three plus three, you would start with three and count on three more numbers. So it would be three, four, five, six. And your answer would be six. Now let's go to the second row. We'll start with two plus one. You start with two and then count up one number on the number line to three. So three would be your answer. Two plus two, you would start with two and then you would count up two more numbers to four. So you would start with two, three, four. That would be your answer for that one. Three plus three, just like in the very first row that we did, you start with three and count up three more and you will get six. Two plus two, just like what we did a few problems ago, you start with two, then count three, four. Now it's six plus two. You start with six since it is a larger number than two and you just count up. So it would be six, seven, eight. Lastly, three plus one is much like the first one we did on this row, which was two plus one. With three plus one, we start with three since it's the largest number and we count up one digit since it's three plus one and that would give us four. Now we are on the third row starting with five plus two. We've done five plus two before, so you should know that you lock in five in your brain and you count up two. So you count five, six, seven, and seven would be your answer. Next is six plus two, which is very similar. So you lock six into your brain since it is the larger number and count up two, just like you did the last time. So it'd be six, seven, eight, and your answer would be eight. Five plus two again, and you should already know that. It's five, six, seven. So, like, so your seven would be your answer. Two plus one. You lock two in your brain because it's the higher number and you count on. So two, three, and three would be your answer. We know that three plus three is the same. So it doesn't matter because either one, neither is larger. So you could say three, four, five, six, and six would be your answer. And lastly on this row, six plus six, which is very similar to the three plus three because both of the add-ins are the same amount. So you start with six and then you count up six spaces. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And 12 would be your answer for that one. Finally, last but not least, we are on the very last row. So it's starting with four plus four. And since both of the add-ins are the same, it doesn't matter what you start with. So you start with four and count up four spaces. So it would be four, five, six, seven, eight. And eight would be the sum of that equation. Next is six plus four. Six is the larger number, so you start with six and count up four spaces. So it would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And ten would be your answer. And four plus two, Four is obviously your larger add-end, so you start with four and count up two spaces. So it would be four, five, six, and six would be your answer. We have already done four plus four in the beginning of this row, 
So this should be easy for you. You start with four and count up four spaces and you will get eight. For five plus three, five is your larger add end and three is the smaller one. So you start with five and count up three spaces. Five, six, seven, eight. And eight would be the answer you get. We've already done three plus three multiple times, so this should be easy for you. Um, since they're the same, each add end is three. Neither are larger than another. So you start with three and count up three spaces, and you will get six. Now I'm going to show you another trick that helps addition get a little bit easier for you. You can also count on your hands. As we know, for the most part, we have five fingers on each hand. And we can count on those fingers as long as the add-ins are smaller than five in the equation that we're doing, such as five plus three. You can see that in the picture, there are five fingers held up on one hand and three on the other. So you can count the fingers. You can count one, two, three, four, five, and then just imagine that there's a plus symbol in between and then three on the next hand. One, two, three. So now we can count them all together after making sure that the right amount of fingers are held up. So let's do that. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Therefore, your sum or your final answer for the equation would be 8 and you would put that right behind the equal sign. Learn today so I can really see what you grasp from this lesson. I would also like for you to embed a Vocaroo voice link inside of your thing link just kind of touching on some points that you learned today that you really want to share with me. I've provided to my thing link as well as my Vocaroo just to give you an idea of what I'm looking for in this assignment. It's nothing complicated, just a review so I know that you know what you're doing. All right, everyone. Assuming that you understood today's lesson, here is a link for tomorrow's lesson, which will be division. And you can just watch it on YouTube. It's just a fun little video to kind of give you a stepping stone into what we will be talking about so you're not just thrown into it. I've watched it and I've really enjoyed it myself. And I thank you for listening and I'll talk to you tomorrow.